It's been the greatest honor of my life to represent Delaware, to protect our seniors, our environment, our small businesses, and women's reproductive rights. I'm running to represent Delaware in the United States Senate. Welcome back to America Decides. Delaware has never elected a black woman to the U.S. Senate. The state's lone member of the House is looking to change that. I spoke with Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester today and began by asking her about what that would mean to her. Well, first of all, I have to say, um, you know, I, I a lot of um, students, um, you probably know my story that even when I decided to run for Congress, I had never run for anything in my life. Um, I had just been widowed the year before I decided to run. And I was over 50. All of those things that people say, oh, you can't do it. And I think that this moment, the fact that I'm running, the fact that there are other Black women who are running, um, the fact that, you know, we have historic candidates that are stepping up at all levels, not just in the Senate, um, really, I hope, inspires others to just do their part, whatever that is, whether it's running or running a campaign or contributing. Uh, my best friend, she said, I don't have money to give you, but I can make you pots of spaghetti and, pe and beef stew. And that's what she did for me. So I think this moment is a special one to me personally. Um, you know, it is not lost on me that there are currently no black women in the Senate. And so to be able to um, represent um, is important. Um, and also, and probably more as equally as important to me is representing my state. Um, you know, that is important to me as well. So um, I don't, I, I, people ask like, what does it feel like to make history? And I think for many of us, we're not thinking about making history. We're thinking about doing the work. We're thinking about making a positive difference in people's lives. And um, and that's really um, what, what I think about when I'm doing this work is how can I make things better? And then also, how can I represent well? And this week, Delaware State Senator Sarah McBride announced that she is going to run for Congress. In fact, your a House seat. Do you support her candidacy? Well, again, you know, Sarah also represents, you know, a, a person who will be would be breaking barriers should she win. Um, she's qualified. I mean, what, what do you see? What do you think that says about Delaware? The fact that you could potentially have the first openly transgender member of Congress if she's elected. And as we've discussed, you know, your potential Senate bid could make history as well. What do you think that says about your state? Well, you know, it's funny, like when people asked me the first time I ran and won and became the first woman and the first person of color to represent Delaware, I was like, I was only one vote. It is the people of Delaware that really have made these decisions and that have stepped up. And some people just think of Delaware as a blue state, but we are only three counties and we're blue, we're purple, we're red, um, we're coast, coastal, urban, suburban, and rural. And so we really are a microcosm of the country. And I think what it represents is back to that theme of bright hope that all of us can be included in our democracy. That's what I think it represents. You know, and right now, Sarah is the first one to come out of the gate for this position, but there are some uh, other great folks that candidates potentially that might step up as well, who have, uh, you know, said that they're interested. And so again, I just think it's representative. So just to be clear, you're not making an endorsement just yet. Oh, no, 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 not just yet. I, I'm, I, I have to say, fortunately in Delaware, we're small. And so I've actually either run with, encouraged to run, or served with many of the other folks that are talking about running as well. But I do know that um, Sarah is an incredible, and uh, we'll see what, what what comes along in the next 490 whatever days there are to uh, to the election. I know you're very close to uh, Senator Tom Carper, who is retiring. You worked with him when he was governor, when he was a congressman. I know you're also very close to President Biden, who also served for more than three decades in the U.S. Senate. And so I'm curious if you consulted the president before making your decision. 
Well, you know, um, he has been just, first of all, such a great champion for this country. Um, I remember when he decided to run for president and we had a meeting, he and I, in his home, and he talked about his aspirations for the first vice president that was a woman. We talked about representation as well in, in the Senate. And uh, the day before I announced, I actually got a call from him. Uh, he was just jumping on a helicopter and it was just, it was an honor. It was an honor to hear from him. He has been so encouraging, and um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to running on a ticket with him together. I know you also serve as the co-chair for his reelection campaign. We know the president is set to deliver a major speech tomorrow on the economy, on this concept of so-called Bidenomics. Is this a message that we will hear from him more on the campaign trail? Yes. I mean, I, I you know, first of all, like you said. We've all heard about Reaganomics, which was more top down or trickle down. And sometimes it just never even got down. And for him, his and it comes from who he is and how he served, that his focus is on from the bottom up to the middle out, which will help everybody. It's a focus on Main Street, not just Wall Street. And we've seen in the past two years the impact of that. I know you're excited about his candidacy, but our CBS News poll found recently that 42 percent of Democrats actually don't want the president to run for reelection. How do you respond to that? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, I can only respond based on what I see and what I hear. I mean, I know polls, we we look at polls and they're snapshot in time. But when I'm out on the campaign trail, when I'm talking to my colleagues, people really have seen the positive impact that his presidency has already had. And I love his theme. Let's finish the job. And lastly, I just want to get your thoughts on this decision that we just got from the Supreme Court. Moore versus Harper, I know you tweeted we must pass electoral reform in Congress. What does that look like to you? Yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest areas for me and one of the reasons why I um, am interested in serving Delaware in the Senate is because our democracy, the very foundation is on the line. And so when we, you look at our courts, you know, who were held in such high esteem, there are now folks that feel where are the ethics, you know? And so this impacts these major decisions, whether it is voting rights decisions, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's the, the reversing Dobbs, these things, the Senate is the place where we can have a major impact. All right. Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, thank you so much for joining us here on America Decides. Thank you.